Dr. Parker, again, you've emphasized the importance of nurturing, facilitating, creating the possibility and the space for a wholesome community for the girls to come together in across the spectrum of their diversity uh, when they come into this congregational setting. Uh, and I know from the talk this morning that you've given a lot of thought to the structure of leadership. And I remember you wanted to make the point that it wasn't really particularly hierarchical, but you had your own vision of leadership. Would you share that with us? Sure. Um, I have um, experienced young persons who have this natural ability to mobilize uh, from within and sometimes from behind to get a job done. If a task needs to be done, they have the capacity to do that. Um, I must confess, some of my observations have not been necessarily uh, of young persons who are mobilizing for the good. I've actually seen young people who are members of gangs uh, give leadership, but I must say, leadership that is unparalleled to that which would be in corporate places, you know, if it was polished, it's just an unpolished, rough type of way of doing it. So I think that a part of this community building is to actually be attentive to, to discern the young leaders that are among the group. Who are the go-to persons that the teenagers themselves will uh, ask questions or even get permission to speak? Because um, there are some leaders within settings that uh, uh, will silence the group and then give the group authority to speak. It's amazing when you actually see this. And they won't even see, say anything themselves. Um, I remember so very well um, one year when I was um, teaching Bible study in the uh, Dallas uh, County De Juven De Juvenile Detention Center in Dallas, uh, Texas, that um, um, among these 10 girls in the residential drug treatment, there was one that um, just had tremendous leadership qualities that I hope and pray has, as she's moved beyond that setting, she's really began to develop in a wholesome way. She would be the one who ha didn't have any problem saying to me things like, um, well, miss, you the one who go to church all the time, so that might mean something to you, but that doesn't mean anything for us. And they would all nod. <laughs> <laughs> they would nod, because she had spoken for them what, what they, you know, what they really wanted to say, but they didn't feel empowered to say. Then on some occasions, she would um, even say, uh, here's saying, uh, uh, Shan, why don't you read this? When I couldn't get Shan to read the scripture, she would pass the Bible over to her. And most interestingly, uh, the students would defer to her when I asked some of them to pray. They say, why don't you pray? So I would say, who do I want to pray? And they would like, in unison, say her name. I mean, I had to learn that this is their leader. In a sense, she was their spiritual leader mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. because uh, while she didn't use flowery, flowery words, or neither did she use 50 cent theological language, boy, she could pray. I mean, it was this conversation that was rich, rich and deep that, um, that spoke to what they were feeling as well as what I was feeling, and I didn't know at that level is that I also needed her to pray for me. So that's a long way of saying to discern leadership among girls, and I would venture to say all youth in our ministries because it's there. It's just not polished and tapped. And once you discern this leadership, then find ways to channel them into finding opportunities to give leadership. I think one of the um, common practices in youth ministry is that we have youth Sundays where we invite young people to give some leadership in doing the sermon or some type of liturgy or whatever. I affirm that. I think that's also a good idea. Uh, but I also think that we have not really tapped into some of the other gifts that young people can bring to our congregations, like strategic planning. I mean, it does not make a lot of sense that you want to go and talk with young people who are in the inner city, and you won't even ask the question to a, a kid who's from the inner city that just decided, praise be to God, mm -hmm. to join your youth ministry. Maybe you should have a conversation with that young person because they might have something to say about what to say and what not to say, 
what to do and what not to do, what to wear and what not to wear. I mean, it might be some codes of ethics that sh that you or I, as an adult, might not even be tapped into. Um, that young persons who um, can help us think tr strategically. I'm having problems saying that word, but strategically about how to do ministry. Um, uh, the brilliance that young people have and they can give leadership if we allow them to speak and be a part of our planning is a part of that shaping of leadership. But back to the youth group and the girls, I think that we have opportunity to discern that type of leadership uh, with with just, just raw, uncut, unpolished little diamonds just waiting for us to help them shine through. So I think that's what we're called to do as we kind of nurture a good, wholesome community uh, through discerning leaders within the context of our ministries with girls.